Welcome to one of the most dynamic episodes of the underground village in Going Medieval, my fellow gamers. Not only do I manage to use a lot of your suggestions and upgrade my settlement with them, but I also get a visit from a seed merchant and a bunch of angry armed enemies. The enemies get a stiff welcome and none of them survives it, dumping a lot of cool gear on my doorstep, while the trader is welcomed with open arms and makes the best trade of his life walking away happy and improving my relations with this faction. New rooms are dug for future Skep kind of underground production, my villagers have a few birthdays and one of them even gets a whole new perk out of it, following the new gameplay mechanics introduced by update 3. It's a wild episode my friends, so you will definitely enjoy every minute of it. Now I want to start off this episode by using your great suggestions and ideas, so first of all, I'm gonna go down here into one of the first levels of my underground village and I'm going to cut a little bit here, hopefully that will not mess up the stability but we'll just risk it and then I'll put like a wooden beam here just to make sure that I get back that stability and what I'm going to put there are game tables because as one of you suggested and your name is up on the screen it's a good idea to have this spot used for at least something and I think game tables are a great idea considering that is something I saw people use in the showcases I did and they had game tables all over which is a great thing because game tables don't really need their own room to give you good leisure like Joet is using here. So that is something that I'm going to try and do and see what happens. Now out here I had wanted to build these skeps and as one of you pointed out I do not have hay because it is spring not summer where I would be able in summer to get some grasses growing and then get some hay from them. It is now spring and there's none of that. Now let me just see over here. I need to give them more jobs to actually dig this. Another of your suggestions was to actually get a room underground but dig just one tile off of its roof so it's not completely underground and then put those caps in that place actually. So that way even though they would be underground they wouldn't actually be underground because the room wouldn't be underground and I could get production out of them and this is another thing we saw in one of the villagers I showcased in I think just the previous episode which was the 10th episode and link up here if you haven't seen that showcase. So I was thinking which place should I use for a room like that because especially I don't need a big room and I was thinking this section here does really provide that much space so I could use it for that kind of a room. So that is exactly what I will do. I am going to bring in a doorway that's going to be dug right here and then a passageway are going like this and if I make that this long I need to leave uh, this place for a pillar which means digging like this and then a pillar again here meaning digging like so and then going back down here by digging through here so I would have a pillar being here no I think that's actually too deep so let's go like this and then we have the pillar being here 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 and here actually don't dig this one here yeah so now it's proper we have a beam here beam here beam here and a beam here and the doorway passageway through here and i think this will not mess up anything that's over here as you can see this will open up this part here the edges but the game reacts to these right edges as like a full closure even though you can actually see the edge so it's going to be fine it's going to be an underground room so that is where i will put the caps in and then just open up a little bit at the top to have a hole and make this not be an underground room now this also could be something that i could do for my smelting furnaces and my kilns as they have lower production because they are underground room and inside but as uh, this is just a test I will first see how this goes and then I'll expand to making another room for these that are, is going to be like open just to the air a little bit so that it is an open room and then these work. Another important tip that I want to go over is about defenses. Now I'm currently building this because this was one of the older suggestions from the previous episodes to have a quick access up here to my defensive fort up here and that the enemies have to go through this gauntlet and the staircase of doom while I take the shortcut and which is a great idea but an additional idea is about adding pillars 
of let's say well whichever material i have the most of currently that's clay brick walls so if i were to dot clay brick walls around my settlement and maybe even build like full walls next to each other like this then the enemy trebuchets could easily start shooting at these instead of these which would prevent my staircase of doom from collapsing now this is actually something that might be the best built on the places where the enemy spawn and i think they spawn over here on this map if i'm not mistaken so i would build a wall like this over here and see what happens once they start bringing in trebuchets so it's another great suggestion and i thank you your name was on the screen here we are digging for that open farm that we are making down here but i have figured out one thing that i'm going to create a problem with first of all i'm going to leave these as i'm going to see can i heat up my crops my future crops here and see what oh well here we go attack the progeny of the plague so this is basically an instant attack yep let's see who are we getting attacked by we've got bows we've got axes we've got a dagger and some shields and that's about it they seem to have like leather or just regular gamsons and some of them seem to be without armor okay what do we have to fight them with we've got this one who has yet to actually pick up oh she's going for it now that's good unfortunately this was not finished in time i will have to go and run around the whole gauntlet luckily i won't be setting off my own traps so let's see who is doing what that can be interrupted well i think actually everybody can be interrupted except her because she's going for that and who have i not drafted i think i have drafted everyone at this point except her i'm waiting for her to actually go down there grab that axe she was i was messing with their profiles for weaponry because i wanted them to pick up only a good or above and i kind of made a mistake because i set it to fine instead of good so she was without a weapon for a long time now she does have a weapon but i have not actually picked up their armors let's just do this right quickly with the ones that are close enough to actually get that armor they just picked it up so let's put them up here as far as i can see one more armor i could have used or two actually somebody didn't pick up this actually three damn it this was not done well i really was not prepared for this now that is the downside of not carrying your armor because when you get incursions you don't really have the time to actually go pick up your armor and i keep my armor off to be able to benefit from the full speed of the settlers instead of them being slowed down by armor now they are coming in through here next to the bodies of their brethren well the bones i wish they got some like debuff by going through their bones of their predecessors who failed to attack and destroy my village so now they are close enough i have why do i have so few archers archers i thought i had more we'll deal with them anyway they seem to be who are you shooting at oh well i'm gonna shoot back at you <laughs> see who wins oh nice that already dead let's see who are they shooting nope that one and three of you shoot that one so it's interestingly enough they were the ones to pull the trigger first the enemies and not me I didn't actually expect that i thought my folks would shoot first but there you go wait she's hmm okay let's do this manually edward you shoot that one theodoric go for that one alfred go for diana bertrand go for diana and stevin go for diana because that one is kind of moving around wait i do have another one oh she's standing here on top of the other one come on elvis where are you there you are go behind the metal run and then shoot okay and i think that's like just two enemy archers left over and i think i got hit like once edward got hit like once and those guys down there they are not even climbing up they're just walking around here yeah you guys are gunners i mean yeah there we go victory and i didn't even blink or bleed <laughs> for that matter let's take down this guy oh damn it oh he went out of my range oh but no he's not actually totally out of range come on you gotta get him such an easy target practice come on there we go they got him 
and now to finish off Jake and that will be all of them oh nice okay so this worked out beautifully thank you staircase of doom you have done your job perfectly now everybody go back to work although I need somebody to be the caretaker for the dead I may actually need a bigger stockpile for the dead because the bones are not yet deconstructed yet I have so many dead bodies oh Bertrand happy birthday so I'm going to be filling that up and settlers are starving who's starving oh you haven't eaten anything in a long time okay I'll let you go back as soon as you deliver the dead body over here let's just see have I missed any yeah this one was not carried away nor was this one I had a lot of enemies come this time so yeah I have a lot of dead bodies to remove now how do I get all this nice ge what there's still a dead body here Harry come on mate move this guy what did I find here oh nice sturdy linen clothing sturdy linen winter flimsy leather armor sturdy leather fine iron sturdy leather war bow flimsy leather sturdy some sturdy iron main helmets which I could really use and more good leather oh a good leather armor with a high hit point thank you raiders another one and another good helmet oh nice i practically don't even have to make armor after this this is nice i'm gonna be full on gear and good gear at this point let me just go into my stockpiles and see do i even have enough room i probably don't to get all this armor back here yeah i don't really have so one thing that I'm going to do to like simplify things here is to give everybody an order to armor up and then that way I will at least remove some armor from the battlefield and I will put it down later. As for the helmets, yeah, they will be picking up helmets as well now and then I will individually remove these, well, off screen just to not bother you with so much micromanagement but it is something that I want to do and make sure that I get all the good stuff and then of course deconstruct the bad stuff. I think currently I have some male armor in production so I will reduce this down to one just like Blake, wait Blake? Why is Blake making armor? What are his stats? Oh smithing 27, sorry Blake. No problem mate, keep it up. And where is the other workbench? Over here somebody's making a hatchet. So we'll finish that hatchet and that armor and then I'll stop making and start dismantling stuff. This room has only just started being made and this little passage right here that I'm making for the game tables. Now question is can I put a game table just here with like slots for getting onto it from the back? I think it should work out but we'll see. In any event I need more digging to be done here as well but I am letting this room take priority so I won't give them new orders to dig this. I know it's kind of taking too far and thinking about that it is spring. I have some red currants that I can plant and no other seeds as far as I can see. So just to make sure that my villagers don't actually starve I mean I do have lots of food stockpiled but I need always to be making new food. So for at least the current little while I am going to use some of these red currants and make some new stuff that I can harvest during this summer. Well, I guess I could put it here where it's safe and inside of this place. So let's do it here. I will put the red currants to be planted for like a really large area. Well, let's go like this actually. Two and then two and then two and then put in some pathways here so that my villagers can move in through this area quickly yeah there we go so at the back side maybe add one more path and then finish it off here yeah we'll go with that i could plant some trees maybe here do i have any yeah i do i have a birch sapling and a pine sapling how about i build well not build plant those birch sapling here and a pine sapling so that's fine it should look a bit nicer, these stone walls with some trees in them. Now, some of these weapons, they really need to be deconstructed and soon. But I do not have any spots. Well, I could put them here. What is this for material? So I could put them here to be close to the place where it can be deconstructed. So let's do a stockpile 
and then we'll edit it about. Actually, I could have expanded it a little bit more over here and here, possibly here, because there's a lot of weaponry that's been dropped. So we are going to go with nothing that's better than flimsy, and then we'll go with high, but we'll go clear all, we'll go for apparel, and then we'll put clothing shackles, summer clothing, so that that gets destroyed, because I do have like a sewing workstation right close by, and then we'll do the warfare with armor, everything, shields, everything, and weapons, everything. So weapons, shield, armor, and apparel that's flimsy or sturdy, and that's, let's say, so below 90% and high. So that should work and I should have stuff to deconstruct that's gonna be close by. Now let's let the villagers do their thing and in the meantime I should see about how much of the stuff is left up here. So a lot, because I do not have a lot of them. Well, actually here I have set up all of them as stewards and holders as number one, but they do have lots of their own jobs, which are probably taking precedence. So if I want them to actually be hauling, I need to turn off some jobs. So for example, over here somewhere where I am crafting, well, these two, they will stop once they finish crafting, but this, this can be stopped. And well, I don't want to stop them digging here and I will build just this over here that I wanted to test. So I'm going to have a back mount table right here and I need a wooden beam up here. But the question is, can they sit down on it? I hope they can. Now they are, as I said, digging this. Exhausted. Who's exhausted? Yeah, probably because of the fight. I kept them past their bad times. And up here I have given them a lot of stuff to actually plant. So that's going to take a while for somebody to do as well. And I seem to have stuff on the ground, which should not be happening. And I definitely need to remove, wait, is there anything on this ground or is it just ground? Yeah, it's just ground. It's a good, good thing I caught this in time. So no food, food should not be on the ground and tallow can stay here. So as these clay piles, but the beets and the carrots, they have to be moved on a shelf and hopefully that will happen soon. Now, I do have plenty of these storage areas for armor and weapons, as you can see, 85 to 100. Maybe I should extend this a little bit down to 70. 70 to 100, superior to flawless. Maybe I should open it up to like fine. And let's see over here. These are like accepting anything that's been thrown at them. Flimsy to fine. While this one is high for flimsy to sturdy below 90 hit points. So they should be transferring that as soon as actually they don't have other jobs to do. But half of them are asleep. Maybe I should just speed up the game. That will give us more time for them to actually do their jobs. So Druid here is digging and they just woke up. Hopefully they will finish these tasks. This is almost finished and I won't add any more to it. This will probably be finished quickly because I really wanted to test this out. Well, in this episode, as this was the suggestion to use in this episode to add like a game table here. And there we go. Aldof is doing it. And hopefully we'll see somebody play here once this is finished. Should be interesting to see. Oh, there we go. Nice one, Druid. So this was an awesome advice and I really like how this turned out. I will probably add one more over here. Uh, well, not there, here because that's a spot I have for it and maybe actually just right next to it too. And that's why I will free up some room over here, which I could use for something else. Now, I think I wanted to say this, but I kind of skipped it and told you about all the other stuff that here I will have a problem because this room will be an open floor underneath like two layers and it will be my outside food production place, my farm, but if I want my villagers to go through here and go down here where I have the ice production, which it's a question, can I even produce here? What is the temperature in this room? 2.7 degrees. So this is not going to really be producing because the temperature has not been met. 2.7 down here in spring. Interesting. At the bottom should hopefully go down. I don't really have a doorway here, here, a doorway. And then we'll see how that goes. Yeah, hopefully it will be closed up and it will be able 
to chill out and reach a lower temperature like later in autumn maybe so hopefully next year i will have some ice blocks actually made here so let's go up above now they still haven't moved much of the stuff so what is giving you so many jobs tailoring and stuff do i have any tailoring being done let's go back over here no and this was done yeah they produced a new weapon so why are you not coming up here to pick this stuff up Oh, you have actually some cutting to do, so let's disable that. I think I wanted to get more wood for all the production stuff that I needed to do, but I already have 300, so let's say I stop them from doing that anymore, and then hopefully they will finally start picking up more of the stuff. I think some of it was picked up, but not a lot, and they are already into their next phase of sleeping. They have actually managed to at least plant the red currants. How many did that take? Half of my supply, so not a lot. And then my setting up any food to be made here i seem to be i do have some meals in pre-production i will stop this one from cooking and i have just regular meals here for which i seem to have spent yeah all of those that were here the beets and carrots they were spent so might as well well just leave it in pre-production like that now this place has some materials left over some clay and some limestone because i have allowed them to bring it from down here so that they have a short path so that's fine i will leave it as such and what's the temperature down here at night 27.5 outside here is 2.3 still quite warm for actual ice production well let's go back to full speed and see if tomorrow they will actually pick this up because it's really starting to decompose here i mean it's not a good thing to have so much of this stuff decompose because there are some really good ones up here and i should have enough room on my stockpiles for all of them yeah these are not full completely and this one is definitely not full and it takes a lot of stuff to fill it so hopefully i will see more of them picking this stuff up they are still underground doing their thing and why where are you oh and i have these to be picked up so that's taking them a long time as well oh okay so i had a lot of stuff left over from the previous episode that wasn't actually picked up and the stockpile is definitely going to need to be extended even further for me to be able to put all these dead bodies here in any event i do hope that they get to these jobs i haven't even managed to finish this thing but at least i have planted new red currants and i have hunted some animals i think that i saw in the beginning of the episode so i probably have some new leather yeah i have 164 so i can make some new armor if i don't actually have enough but yeah okay so i definitely see more stuff being picked up it's just that they rarely have enough free time on their schedules to actually deal with that but they have filled this up and this is getting filled well maybe i should extend this to good good 70 to 100 hit points and they might take that stuff down faster but okay it's been done it's been done it's almost all completely moved i just have some flimsy shields and some clothing left over and unfortunately the good leather armor which just lost another hit point and nobody is still picking this up what what okay how about i drop this down to 25 will you now pick it up i guess i was kind of well yeah that was not 70 percent okay sorry that was my bad the percentages i kind of had them off in my mind so yeah they should now fix this yeah okay so that was my bad definitely i can now pick this up because it's a ripe and i needed to plant it and to make some new food out of it and i think that's about it for the stuff that's close by do i have any dead trees that i should jump on and cut immediately no and the trees were planted here hopefully as well why don't i see them weird oh they must have used those saplings somewhere else yeah that must have been what happened okay so the room down here which needs some wooden beams and i do have some wood now that's probably why i sent them on all that wood hunting because i needed it for beams and now we have plenty of armors and weapons that we need to destroy so we'll go with the dismantling forever and we'll edit it to take only stuff that's like below let's say 70 percent yeah leave it at that 
deconstruct over here as well. Wait, I didn't give it actually. Oh, well, it's forever, so it's fine. So forever here as well. And then zero to 100 hit points, flimsy to sturdy. Yeah, I don't want any clothing that's sturdy or fine, just good and above. And over here, I do not have this job and I should get it. So forever and then go with anything that's below. Oh, Lone Traveler. Nice. But just go and take care of this first. Anything that's, well, flimsy to sturdy. I guess I can smelt pretty much anything that's sturdy. I only use good weapons. Yeah, I'll do it like that. 0 to 100 hit points, flimsy to sturdy. Anything that's for armor and anything that's weapon, anything that's clothing. So the merchant will hopefully get me some good stuff. Who was it that has good speechcraft? Let's just find that person. Here we go, Edward. But he's asleep currently, but his sleep cycle is full. So he should get on and talk to the merchant. Now, one thing that I didn't really look through during this episode is how much I have 86 chronicles and 10 textbooks. So I can unlock the traps and fermentation, but I definitely need more. Well, I think I kind of messed up here because I allowed them to build so many chronicles. Well, write so many chronicles. I should have actually started the production of these. So I'll go back to this and well, keep that forever. And do I have two people working on research? Research one, research one. I do have two people working on research. What was the other one? Skill 23. And it was doing const yeah, here we go, the trade screen. So apple seedlings, sweet, give me that. Barley, definitely, I want to plant some barley. Beet seeds, give me seeds, cabbage, carrots, yes. So many cool seeds. What else do you have? Flax seeds, give me flax. Nice, awesome. And you've got some, what else do you have? Wait, why didn't I just sort it? like so. Wooden traps, no need, apple selling, got them, packed meal, cider, herbs, the, well, herbs, herbs, but not herb seeds. Yeah. So that won't really help me that much. But in any event, this is brilliant. I mean, I just got beet, barley, cabbage, carrots, apple seedlings, flax, pretty much everything I need. How should I pay you? Well, I do have plenty of stuff you don't want. And let's see what do I have that you do want. What's the priciest thing that you would pay for? that I could pay you with. I have some shelves. That's 30. That's cool. I could basically pay off everything with two shelves. That's awesome. But let's see. Uh, sturdy leather summer clothing. Sturdy. I don't really want to wear sturdy. And this is sturdy as well. So I'll give you that. Healing. I don't want to give you. Packaged meals. I don't want to give you. Mechanical components. No. Textbooks. Lavish meals. No. Some flimsy leather. Yes, definitely some flimsy leather okay i could definitely get rid of a lot of these clothings and pretty much that's it yeah at this point proffering for 61 and aquarium for 65 so that's basically it i could just like spice up and make these good relations by adding some i could give you some chronicles that will spice things up and let's say i give you well what do you value a lot i could give you a shelf you could really give me a good bonus if i gave you a shelf so that's it accept and that is fantastic one alignment towards uncrained disciples nice and that means that i just got a bucket load of stuff right over here <laughs> okay so once they're finished sleeping they'll really have a big job ahead of them and i can actually use this room for the seeds because that's exactly where I've been planting them. So I will put a stockpile, a big one here. I will go with very high, clear all, go to seeds. Well, practically every seed. I will just have to actually probably give them orders to do this manually because my settlers are not going to do this instantly. And I need this to be done instantly, especially because of well decomposition in one year. So it's not that bit of a hurry, but I want to plant as soon as possible because it's spring day four. I want to plant that stuff. So how far did I get here with the red current shrubs? This wasn't planted. Okay, so I will shrink the zone because I don't want the time to be spent planting that. I want to plant the other stuff as well. Okay, so sleepy heads, you... Oh, Alfred turned 48 and Julie turned 42. Oh, nice! Alfred gained cold hardly. In previous to cold, he works through the harshest days of winter. This is brilliant. 
nice perk to get on your birthday. Sweet. So this episode has been a complete success because not only did I get my seeds and this village is now saved when it comes to future food production, but I also got a bucket load of stuff that I was able to trade for and then a bucket load of stuff that I will deconstruct to get good skill on my blacksmiths. So all in all, this was one of the best episodes ever. Thank you all for watching and please stay tuned for more.